let's focus on the arrogance first. The arrogance. So people are like, how can you say that it's arrogant so let's of Luz what, Theron? Let's listen to what she actually says. Yes. Many, many years ago, men who were born with great power believed they could cage darkness itself. The arrogance. Is she wrong, though? Is she wrong? But, but, but first of all, let's remove this comment because I want to see yep, more sorry. of the video. Um, is she wrong? One, is she wrong? But second, she's an Aes Sedai of the Third Age. You guys, she's not the book narrator. Yeah. She's not what we know. At the beginning of the books, you thought the same thing, dummy, because that's all we knew. <laughs> Aes Sedai are arrogant. I said I are name, arrogant, you, know. you freaking idiot. I, they are misandrist. A yeah, bit. people are looking at this clip of what Moiraine is saying. Moiraine saying, to die. This is establishing canon and the universe. And it's like, no, <laughs> this is telling you what this person, 3,000 years after the breaking, believes. Who has no idea what actually happened because nobody has any idea what actually happened except for you because you read all 14 books. Why, why, why are you expecting? What is that what you really want? Okay, let's let's envision what you say you wanted. So Moiraine gets up and she goes, oh, Wait, wait, let me play, let me play the video for you. Okay, yeah, give us, give us the video. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the new Moiraine. This is what you say you wanted 3,000 years ago, a group of men tried to cage the dark one and you know what they had they tried really hard um but you know there were some there were some arguments and and they did fail but they tried so hard they were all friends and and then no they weren't that arrogant they were desperate really because there was a war and stuff and okay sorry wait back to the plot where am i are you stupid are you stupid <laughs> of course they're not gonna do that what we don't know oh, these things God. yet like, yes, um, the reason it was just men at the boar, says Connor L, with Lucer and Telamon is because the Aes Sedai of the Age of Legends couldn't agree that it was the right path. So it was arrogant for them to take it upon themselves to do it. So it is was. she wrong? No, Connor, you're exactly right. But like, also, she's not going to explain that to us because she doesn't know that. This is she more Rain Sedai. This, this is, is what not... she's going to use. Yeah. This is an I, unreliable narrator. Thank you, Corwin. That's what's so interesting about the books. Yeah, we actually never get an objective narrator anywhere in the Wheel of Time, except Ever. for the one segment, which is like, a wind stirs in the slopes exactly. of Dragon Mount. And like, it was not the beginning, but it was a beginning. A like, beginning. That's the only objective paragraph we get in any book that's it um, and that's a good that's good storytelling dummy otherwise it would be re like reading an encyclopedia do you want this show to be like an encyclopedia a history textbook no you want it to be interesting and good storytelling you know then like i'm actually i'm kind of pissed they decided to make the wheel of time into a v tv show when the companion to the wheel <laughs> of time was right there each episode alphabetical order going through the terms <laughs> That's what these dummies are saying they want when they're like, how could they say this when really in the books? It's like, are you just showing off your knowledge? Like, yeah, I know that you know that. Well, I okay. know that too, but nobody else does. Counterpoint, Mary Lou. This is me. total feminazi, uh, woke. SJW woke bullshit, misandry. I can't believe they're forcing this agenda on a totally great neutral point, show. I saw thinking... a tweet last night. Sarah, yeah. you're going to die laughing. I literally okay. saw a tweet that someone was like, they should call it Wheel of Woke instead of Wheel of, of Time. I was like, are, yeah. you, are you? first of all, Woke of Time was right there and you missed it. History um, textbooks are also unreliable narrators. There are no reliable narrators. There's yes, no Connor. Objective truth. Humans don't have access to objective history. It's 100%. kind of the entire point of the wheel of time it's kind of the high the kind of the whole point of the wheel of time <laughs> oh, oh, no, reliable... no oh my god siri... oh siri was <laughs> siri was about to text my high school swim coach my hot take on the wheel of time <laughs> um okay thank you siri uh, thank you siri um... Uh, yeah, so I'm really glad that everyone in our comments, like, fucking gets it. Um, Matt Stagger says, it was arrogance to try that shit without Sidar. Great. Yeah, we agree. Um, 
unreliable narr <laughs> Caitlin. Caitlin says, I love it when Mary Lou loses her shit on stupid people. I can't help it. It's like truly the stupidest thing to get upset about that Warren Sedai and arrogant Ice Sedai is being arrogant. Okay, I have something what? I want to I want to play for you, Mary Lou. Okay, fine. Which um it <laughs> might it might totally challenge everything we've been saying. I or love that. We love to be perfectly honest, you guys, you know I go off. You know I go hard, but I love I to be wrong. So, anyone who's listened to the audiobooks will recognize this. I don't know. I haven't listened to the audiobooks. Um, so this is just what, something I wish, uh, you know, people would pay attention to. This is an interview with Robert Jordan that plays at the end of every single audiobook. This interview. Oh. Oh, no, over generations. It actually happened. It's okay. myths. They can't all be anthropomorphizations of natural events. Some of them have to be distortions of things that actually happened, distortions by being passed down over generations. And that led into the distortion of information over distance, whether that's temporal distance or spatial distance. The further you are <laughs> in time or space from the actual event, the less likely you are to know what really happened. And then finally, there was the thought about something that happens in Tolkien and a lot. So let's just play that again for the, the people who are upset. ...by being passed down over generations. And that led into the distortion of information over distance, whether that's temporal distance or spatial distance. The further you are in time or space from the actual event, the less likely you are to know what really happened. This is literally... Do you the think 3,000 years is distant? It's the point of the goddamn books. You fucking dumbasses. And you don't even have to figure that out from subtext or anything because the That's... interview is there at the end of every audiobook. RJ it... himself. Oh, God. Dipshits. It... Yeah, Talman, I've heard this so many times. I know. And I, I listen to I it every time it I finish a book. I, I can't not listen to it. Um, It's so good. I've never Memory heard it before. Born. It's really nice. Mary Lou, did we get early screening passes? Um, Meme Reborn, we got screening passes. And you, you could, could say, say we, we got screening passes. You could say that. Meme Reborn, would you perchance happen to be uh, around San Francisco on November 15th at 5 p.m.? Because, because uh, your girls are hosting. What? Your girls are hosting. <laughs> Uh, and honestly, y'all, I would be screaming and yelling, except that my dear, sweet, wonderful girl, wonderful girlfriend, Madhu, is in the middle of a work meeting in the room next to me. So I can't shout and jump for joy. But we yeah, will. I listen to I this can. every book. Um, <laughs> I can. The Wheel of Time, like, it is inspired by the idea of the distortion of information across mm -hmm. distance and across time. And the consequences of that. And it is everywhere in the books. It, the reason people hate Gawain and they're like, he thinks that Randall Thor killed more gays. Yeah, because he heard that. That's yeah. the information that got to him because it was distorted across right. distance. Um, anyway, what are we hosting? We are hosting the screening. We are giving the introduction to the screening. Uh, that means we get to go up there and introduce the first two episodes and we're dying of excitement. We're dying. And joy. We're dying of excitement and joy. We do know that we get two microphones. Count them. One, two microphones. Yeah, baby. And can it's we be honest be... with you? That's all the information we have. That is so... it. That is all we know. <laughs> that is all we know. We've got a lot of things cooking, a lot of ideas. We got some ideas. We'll um, see what actually happens. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> but yeah. Uh let's yeah. The arrogance, Mary Lou. The arrogance. It's, I don't know what these people want. They're like, what? The how dare she call the men arrogant? The men who went and fought the like an immortal, timeless, physical embodiment of darkness. Quantum, <laughs> uh, being. Yeah. A hundred of them went to fight this embodiment of darkness. So what they want is to just be angry. What they want is to be angry and they want to blame it on feminists because yeah. it's ruining 
their thing when it's really not because if they got what they wanted, it would be a bad storytelling awesome. and not fun. So they don't actually want what they say they want. They just want to be angry and blame it on women because that is misogyny. <laughs> Pintor Tash says, don't let them know the series is about toxic masculinity. Wait, you're saying the series where the main character thinks that the secret to success is holding in all of his emotions and becoming as hard as steel and isn't able to accomplish his goal until he realizes he has to lighten up and feel again and be kind and empathetic to those around him is about wait. toxic masculinity. Wait, wait, wait. So you're saying that the story where the magic power, the male half, the masculine power is uh, corrupted by a or, or let's of say toxic um, is about toxic masculinity. Yeah, where the the male power is I don't know the right word. Um, okay, so it's there's like, like this masculine, there's or, a masculine um, magic. Yeah, it's like a, yeah, it's like poisonous masculine or magic, like, or know, it's like it's like a lethal masculine magic. Yeah. Or, Mm, infectious uh, like masculine in magic. Infect yeah, what is, yeah. What's another word for what that? What is this series about? Know. What is it about? Yeah. Anyway. Could it possibly be about toxic masculine? No, it's probably what? about. What? No, it's probably about My how women, women are bad. It's probably no, okay. about how women are bad. Here's the thing. Here's what Wheel of Time is about, Mary Lou. Wheel of Time is about these three bros from this village, right? Three sick ass dudes. Yeah. These fuck three yeah. sick ass bros. Yeah. And then. This like kind of this bitch shows up into town and it's she's like, bitch. hey, you have to listen to me. But then they're all like, nah, dog, we just got ourselves. At least and, she's uh, hot. But then it turns out all these three bros each got special ways in which they're like totally brotastic. Totally brotastic and way more special than the girls who are also there, but like are super naggy and annoying. But the girls are like huge bitches. Huge bitches, but at least they're hot. But they're hot though. Uh yeah. No, I don't know. Like, I don't get how people read this series and they don't un understand any like, of it. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Like, what are you it's getting out of this? Very weird. Anyway. Um, yeah, so arrogance. They were arrogant. I think they were arrogant, objectively, but yeah. also... Like Ulrika says, they were absolutely desperate. This was the last chance they had, right? They're, they had failed at everything else, and so... You know, Luce Theron gathered his 100 companions to, this was a last ditch effort, right? And the female, I said, I thought that there were other options, but Luce Theron thought there was no other options. He was desperate. He was also arrogant, right? That does not cancel out the other, Yeah. right? And as has been pointed out by various people on Twitter, like it wasn't necessarily, like we take it for granted that because Luce there and Telemon decided to do it and because it ended up sealing the dark one, that it was therefore necessary that they acted that way. As people have pointed out, though, they didn't wait for Kalendor to be completed. They didn't wait until they'd come to an agreement with the women Aes Sedai. They, there was no necessarily tactical need. They had to take out the Forsaken right then. Um, we oh, don't wow. know. Because it's how it happened in that turning of that age, it is what happened. But just because it's what happened doesn't mean it's what had to happen. Yeah. But it was the only way. Yeah, um, totally. Okay, let's get to the Lu real meat. And Luce there, and Luce there, and hold on, just one last point. Luce yeah, Theron yeah. tells us himself that it was arrogant, right? Luce Theron so, tells you the that the arrogance. Yes. The arrogance. I think I might remain the arrogance Aja for the rest of time. I'm so <laughs> obsessed with that line. I remember when I first heard it, I was like, yes. The arrogance. Yes. I love it um, so much. Pintor Tash Lou said himself, in my pride, I believed we could do it. And I doomed the world. Eliana. Eliana, my love. Thank you so much, everyone. This has been Maidens of the Spear, where we talk about the Wheel of Time. And what else do we do, Mary Lou? We have a really good time. And That's we right. hope that you had a really good time today. And Mary Lou, where can people find you? You can find me at Mary Lou Larry Moo on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. And you can find me at Spear Maidens on Twitter, Maidens of the Spear on YouTube and Twitch. And uh, 
You can also find us on Patreon now. <gasps> Exciting. So That's if you right. feel like contributing, we would be appreciative, but also right. not necessary. Definitely not necessary. We appreciate you no matter what, but you can find us on Patreon. If you feel like giving us money, um, <laughs> you can do that now. Sure. So <laughs> Patreon maidens of the spear. But thank you so much for joining us, everybody. We hope you all had a really good time. We love you so very much. May you so find just eternal happiness and satisfaction. That's right. Bye now. Bye.